Hey, what's happening all? It's Friday the 28th, the end of the month. This is it. And I believe I, somebody warned me that Monday is a holiday. I, I'm not, I'll be honest, I don't know which one. Um, but so my, my staff says a three-day weekend not <laughs> to jump up and do the work thing and bother people. But um, you know, today what we've got is uh, more inflation reports. The PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditures Report, uh, came out. Now that was having a big effect. If we'll take a look here, that mortgage bonds as of yesterday, there was there was some some fear these last couple of days coming into this because they're talking about inflation again. Of course, inflation being what it is, and of course being hotter than what we have seen in a long time. I think this is actually the current readings are somewhat hotter than they've been in the last 13 years. So what's crazy is is that the mortgage bonds are still holding in there. If you look at this from a very long perspective, right? This is where the crash happened. Uh, last year, you know, right when COVID hit, had everything decline. Even at that point, it was at some of its best levels, period, right? And then you get where it's maintained a pretty good course along these the, this, this whole period, that's all because of federal injection of capital. Well, then, you know, we get to see where I was showing yesterday. In fact, I'll pull that back up. I shouldn't have jumped out of there yet. But um, we start looking at yesterday and we start to see that, you um, you know, the last couple of days, there was some really, really negative trading out of fear of what was happening in the market. So because of that fear, we started to see it getting getting fairly negative because of what they thought was going to happen when it comes to, uh, in fact, I didn't share the screen properly. So here it is. You know, so it's you can see where that fear kicked in these last few days of trading. And then we found some stability when the actual numbers come out, because I believe there was some fear that the, the numbers can be much worse. You know, so the PCE is coming in at uh, 3.6. The year over year index increased from 2.4 to 3.6, which is pretty damn hot, right? I mean, that's a big jump for the PCE when the Fed's trying to keep it below two, right? Or somewhere right around two. But what does that talk about for us as far as real inflation? Like I said last time, somewhere closer to 12%. The other thing that I find is interesting, you look at the PCE and the CPI, CPI is saying 4.1, PCE is talking about 3.6. Well, if the CPI is 4.1, right? And that's what some people are going to believe is real rate of inflation. Um, let's say that it's that, right? Well, I'm seeing interest rates for investors in the low fours right now, which a lot of people are like, I can't believe it's so high. Come on, guys. If the rate of inflation for the Fed if the, the uh, CPI is 4.1 and we're not far off that a quarter, maybe three eighths of a point off of that, that the Fed's number, think about that. That's a quarter to three eighths in interest that you're really paying. If you believe that that's what it is. In reality, we know it's, it's over 10. We know it's closer to 12. You go to John Williams Shadow Stats. If you have not signed up for that, sign up for it. Well, if that's the case, we're talking 12%, you're not paying anything in interest. You're getting paid to hold the money, right? It's negative interest, if you will. So from the perspective of the investor, locking something long-term, having that asset cash flowing, continue to grow, grow your assets. So don't allow this stuff to freak you out too much. Now, it is kind of freaky. We got this kind of inflation. I'm not seeing it translate into the bond significantly. It's because there's a ton of capital flowing in there. The only thing that kind of sucks for me is I can't use these charts as a way to gauge. I've talked about that recently as well. This is a general way of looking at it, just because the way the bonds are going. But if, when there's risk here, it could translate to a bigger shift in the investor world because you're talking about personal capital going in here, not this government capital. This is not all the, the Fed money going in to fund these real estate investor loans. So as a result of that, we're not going to see the it translate quite the same. It might translate a little bit worse, right? So We've got some things we're cooking up here at SNMC that should hopefully get us a little bit better pricing coming up. We're trying to keep to keep some things going. It's going to help us out, at least stabilize the pricing so it's not as volatile. Um, continue to reach out to us. We appreciate the trust. I'll continue to keep bringing the information about the markets. Um, but right now, with this kind of thing that's going on with, with, uh, with inflation, I would be one that would be locking some stuff in and not trying to hunt around and waste time. Definitely want to get into this and work with people who understand what they're doing. Uh, next week, we got the ADP report. And the BLS jobs report, estimate, the estimates are about $600,000, um, excuse me, 600,000 new jobs in either one of those, those, uh, those reports, ADP or, or the Bureau of Labor Statistics report. So we'll see how that works out. They'll tell us a lot about the market next week. I'll be talking to you on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Have a great holiday. Enjoy that three days. And uh, we'll talk to you then.